Today we're looking at another great guitar, and this time it's a PRS Mark Tremonti model SE. This guitar has a lot to offer, offers a lot of great features, not at a huge price, very reliable guitar, and for any of you considering buying this guitar, I'm gonna give you the lowdown, so stay tuned. But first, I wanted to remind our viewers that if you're not already subscribed to our channel, please click subscribe. You're gonna get access to a lot of great reviews, pedals, amplifiers, mods, guitar tricks, tips, lessons, all kinds of good stuff for you. And what I'm starting now is, I'm giving my lucky subscribers a chance to win uh, an item that is offered to us by our sponsors. This time, it's going to be the Donner Morpher pedal, which I also did a review on. So if you look, at, look back at my other videos, you'll hear this in action. And I'm giving this away to one of, one of our lucky subscribers. All you need to do is subscribe to the videos and you're automatically entered into a draw to win a new item by one of our, by one of our um, sponsors each and every month. So don't miss up an opportunity to win some great gear. And if you're a sponsor and you wanna be able to sponsor our videos, please contact me. I'm always very, very pleased to be able to review new gear and uh, give you my opinion on that. So just contact me and we'll work out the details. Without any further ado, we're gonna be looking at the PRS SE and I'm gonna give you the lowdown on this guitar. So for those of you who've been following my channel for a little bit, you know that I'm always look, looking for a good guitar at a good price. I don't have any qualms about buying an expensive guitar, but honestly, there's only so many expensive guitars you can buy before you're kind of, you know, stretching your budget. So whenever an opportunity comes about to pick up a good quality, less expensive guitar, I jump on it. And I was recently looking for uh, another guitar uh, basically something that's A, reliable, B, looks good, C, not too expensive, and um, is light. And this one came about, I spotted this used, and I actually traded another guitar for it. And um, after using it for a bit, I'm ready to give you a review. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with PRS, um, they're a huge company that makes really high quality guitars. Um, they've been around for a long time, uh, great players like Santana, Carlos Santana uses their, their guitars and a host of other guitar players now use PRS guitar as well as Mark Tremonti. So they came out with a Mark Tremonti model and they have three basic models. They have a high-end Mark Tremonti model which is not made in Korea, very expensive. You're probably looking anywhere between three and four thousand dollars for that particular guitar. Then they have the Mark Tremonti SE model, which is the budget line and is made in Korea um, and is very inexpensive. I mean, brand new, I think these guitars sell for about seven or eight hundred dollars. Um, but you can always pick up used ones like I did. Uh, I didn't pay anything for this. I just traded a guitar. But generally, I've seen these for sale for you know as little as three, four hundred dollars, which is a steal, really. Um, so what's good about this guitar? Well, uh, first of all, uh, although it's made in Korea, please don't make that turn you off of the guitar. Lately, I've seen a lot of good quality guitars coming out of Korea. Um, the quality, you know, it does vary, yes. You can get a good guitar, you can get a cheap guitar. Generally though, when guitars are made under license for other big manufacturers, the quality does seem to be quite good. And in this particular case, that is the actual fact. So let me run down this guitar and give you some information on what it is. So the PRS uh, line uh, uh, that, of guitars that they have basically conforms to the style of the more expensive guitars. The, the difference that they uh, offer in the budget line is A, the pickups are not as good, B, the, the top is only slightly curved and not really carved like the more expensive models. Um, the tuners are less expensive. Um, so the hardware, maybe the pots are a little bit less expensive, but generally there's not a lot on this guitar to begin with. 
the bridge is the same bridge that you'll find on the more expensive models. As a matter of fact, I have an original American made uh, PRS um, uh, 245 and uh, it has the same bridge. And I think this bridge, if I'm not mistaken, I was looking for this bridge not long ago and just the bridge I've seen being sold uh, on eBay for like well over 100, 150 bucks. So considering you can probably pick up this entire guitar used at about $400, it just gives you an idea of how inexpensive it really is. Now, the thing that I noticed about this guitar is the finish is flawless. It has the same um, features like the horn, for example, here is carved so that you have easier access to the upper frets. And that's the same on all of the more expensive Paul Reed Smith designs. You have the tummy tuck in the back here. You have the... Um, neck through body well it's not through it's not actually through the body but the heel of the uh, neck is contoured to the body which gives you a really nice feel um, towards the bottom of the neck the neck profile and neck thickness is very very comfortable in the hand it's not very fat front to back it's not like a baseball style it fits really comfortably. I'd say it's one of my more comfortable necks, actually. Very similar to my more expensive PRS. So you're not really, they're not really skimping on those details. Although it's a more inexpensive guitar, it does have binding all the way around. Plastic binding around the body. It has a bound neck. The neck is rosewood. Uh, maybe it's a little bit less expensive rosewood. I don't really know, but you know what? There's not a lot of people that can tell uh, the difference between better quality and cheaper quality rosewood. Um, so it's not a big deal breaker <clears throat> if you don't like the rosewood. But the rosewood, the rosewood is very nice, it's very dark, it has some nice figuring in it. Um, it's not pale. Some other manufacturers use uh, paler rosewood. Some have even gotten gone to baked maple. Uh, because a rosewood is becoming more expensive, but they're still using rosewood um, The tuners on this seem to be pretty good. They're they're labeled PRS in the back um, They're not locking. They're not extremely high-end tuners You can always change them out for locking tuners if you want which is rather inexpensive I don't feel the need to do so they they hold the strings quite well the strings don't don't seem to be going out of tune, so it's um, doing the job right now. The nut is a typical PRS style nut, it's in white. It looks like it's made of a synthetic material, um, typical PRS style there. The inlays on this particular guitar are dots, and that's one thing that you'll notice with PRS. The, this is an earlier version of the Mark Tremonti model. The newer versions have birds and uh, PRS has pretty much uh, gone to birds for most of its guitars. It's one of their trademarks. This one didn't have birds at the time and I kind of like that. I think uh, since I already have uh, an American version with birds, it's nice to have another version without the birds. Uh, dots are fine for me. Um, the dots are well placed. There's no sloppy glue or any kind of uh, sloppy cuts. Everything seems to be really, really well made. Really, there's no issues in terms of finish on the guitar that I can find. Um, the paint job is really, really good. There's no issues there. There's no blemishes or sloppy um, areas with the binding or anything that you see sometimes. Uh, so I'm quite, quite happy with that. Now, the um, one of the things that you know are always is always a little bit tricky with the less expensive guitars is the hardware. The hardware oftentimes is where they'll cut corners and they'll put in uh, pickups that are less expensive. The pickups that were originally in this guitar, the Mark Tremonti model, they're not bad. Uh, I took them out. Okay, I put in a set of uh, uh, these are Tone Rider uh, and they're Alnico twos. And the reason why is because I tend to prefer the sound of Alnico 2s, which is less um, less of a hot pickup. So the rating on the pickup is usually below eight, somewhere around the seven 
maximum eight, but usually below eight um, on the on the reading if you take an ohm, an ohm meter to it and um, and check it out. These ones are a little bit hotter. The original pickups are hotter. And I particularly didn't like the neck pickup. I found it was very muddy and I wanted, I like my neck pickup to be a little bit more clear. So I took an opportunity to buy the Tone Rider pickups, which I'll demo for you um, and you'll get to hear them. Um, but I like them so far and I think that the upgrade was well worth it. The Tone Rider pickups, by the way, ended up costing me about $100 uh, plus shipping. Um, which is a, a bargain for two pickups. Um, not, I'm not disappointed with them. Uh, very good opportunity to upgrade that, and I took it. Um, the pots in here are full-sized pots. They're not mini pots. A lot of the, a lot of some sub guitar manufacturers like to go with the mini pots. These are full size, which is great. The switch for the toggle is a good quality switch. It's not a cheap one. The Input jack is at par with most input jacks. Nothing really to write home about there. So overall, the electronics, the pickups could use an upgrade if you ask me. Some people might prefer the hotter pickups if you're playing more uh, aggressive type music. I don't, so I prefer to go with something a little bit more mellow. The bridge on the pickup is standard on, um, it's the standard wraparound tailpiece which is quite nice. I like it because it's comfortable. When you rest your hand on it, there's no sharp edges or screws or something poking into your palm. Um, uh, there's really no problems with intonation. Some people worry about that, but I really found that in, you know, you can adjust the intonation with the Allen keys that are behind here very easily. And usually it's dead on. There's not much to do on this guitar in terms of adjustment besides maybe giving the neck a little bit more relief if it needs it. But this one didn't need it at all. So good quality hardware in terms of the bridge. Um, and there's not much else to this guitar. As a matter of fact, when I pulled out the pickups to replace them, this guitar is so light that the pickups are actually most of the weight of the guitar. And that's really what I like about this guitar. And if I'm not mistaken, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, for those of you who know better than I do, this first model was thinner. The new model is a little bit thicker in terms of the body. And that I think also adds to the lightness of this, um, of this guitar. The thing is, the guitar is resonant. It really resonates well. And the lightness is really uh, um, a pleasure for me because it gives me the opportunity to rest my back. And if, if anybody ever, has ever played uh, a Gibson Les Paul that's not weight relieved, like the Black Beauties and stuff like that, after an hour or two, your back is hurting. This one you can play for a long time, no issues with your back hurting or anything like that. So. Overall, you know, the pots is, is standard uh, two, two volume, two tone pots. There's no switching or anything like that. I didn't modify them for, for coil tapping, just a straight uh, pickup swap. They're open cover pickups. The original pickups in the guitar was also uh, not covered. Uh, and it also gives a really nice look to the guitar. I think look wise, style wise, it's a really striking guitar. I think anybody will take notice of this guitar. The, I don't know the exact weight of the guitar. Um, maybe some of you can give me that information exactly to how much it weighs. I haven't weighed it, but it's well balanced. I've, I've tried some SE models that had really heavy necks or heavy bodies and it would flop. This one is well balanced. So when it's on your leg, it really <clears throat> sits very comfortably and it doesn't feel like it's top heavy or bottom heavy, and I like that a lot. What else can I say about the Tremonti model? I think it's gonna, it's really gonna be a durable um, guitar. For the money, I think it's a great starter guitar, and it's a great intermediate guitar, and you know, with a few upgrades, could even be a pro uh, version, if, you, uh, if you're not picky about having the SE on the headstock. So, if you have an opportunity tr to try this guitar, pick one up at your local store, play it and give me your feedback. I really would like to hear your comments on it. I think I made a good um, deal by swapping my other guitar for this one. I'm very happy with it. The neck is really a pleasure to play. 
it's easy to bend the notes the 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 width of the um, of the neck is really really comfortable it's not too small for my hands some guitars tend to be a little bit tighter this one is not so overall I give this guitar really two thumbs up uh, a good bargain a good deal well-made guitar which I think you will be very very happy with so stay tuned to my channel where I'm gonna put some more videos and I'll be playing this guitar uh, through some gear maybe the modified blues junior which I just did a, a video about uh, that you can check out or maybe my new Supro dual tone that I just picked up uh, and, and I'll probably go through a few pedals as well so stay tuned and give me your comments below I'm always very excited to hear from you if you have questions please don't hesitate I'll try to respond to them as quickly as I can and please don't forget to subscribe or you're gonna be missing some really great videos so stay tuned <laughs>